So as most people know, COVID-19 has, has dramatically changed the, the oncology care model um, today and probably forever. Um, many of the patients um, with uh, myeloblithin neoplasms and myelofibrosis specifically are advanced at age and have competing comorbidities um, that put them at risk for complications of COVID. Myelofibrosis is an inflammatory disease, and we now know that many of the um, complications that ensue with COVID-19 are a direct result of a hyper-inflammatory response by the host, um, which also intersects with, um, with uh, thrombosis. So it would, it would suggest a, um, a population of patients, particularly with myelofibrosis, that would be at risk uh, for um, high mortality with this um, virus. Um, and for that reason, uh, many of us had to revamp the way we provide care for many of our patients with myelofibrosis in terms of reducing the exposure um, in the cancer center um, by reducing the number of visits, uh, by transfusing in order to extend visits, um, by employing supportive therapy like recombinant recipotin, um, or even the modulatory drugs um, or other agents to try to uh, address anemia. Um, of course, it affected clinical trial enrollment and the, um, the um, testing that goes along uh, with patients who are enrolled in clinical trials. Um, and interestingly, what came out of um, the experience so far in COVID is the potential role for JAK inhibition, uh, which is um, used... Uh, uh, ubiquitously in myelofibrosis um, in mitigating the uh, inflammatory uh, consequences of COVID-19. So a number of studies are ongoing. Phase two data already exists of ruxolitinib, for example, um, and uh, improvement in outcomes uh, for patients who um, are unfortunate to have COVID, and this is uh, patients without myelofibrosis. Um, and uh, several studies are ongoing, including um, a pacritinib study called the PREVENT study, uh, which is evaluating pancreatinib for 14 days in patients who have severe COVID infection compared to best available therapy. Um, so um, this field is still um, evolving, and um, I would uh, encourage patients who are on JAK inhibitors to remain on JAK inhibitors um, and not to switch therapy in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and um, we and others are interested in evaluating the effect of uh, telehealth and telemedicine in patients with uh, myeloplifin neoplasm. So we've embarked on a clinical trial called um, HELP MPN, um, and this is a randomized phase three study um, comparing scheduled telehealth visits with a mid-level provider um, at the cancer center uh, at a 10-minute weekly, um, over eight-week um, period compared to best available therapy um, or control arm, rather. Um, that could be whatever the investigator decides uh, at whatever frequency that investigator decides with the idea that um, the scheduled telehealth um, intervention um, that is somewhat scripted would ultimately have an impact uh, over a two-month period on um, anxiety and depression um, and stress level measured by a validated NCI um, distress thermometer, um, as well as outcomes, uh, changes in uh, total symptom score, uh, potentially event-free survival over time, which would include change in therapy, admission, COVID infection. Um, because the reality is that telemedicine um, is, um, is clearly here. Um, and even when the pandemic ends, it will continue to be incorporated um, mm -hmm. as part of our uh, care of patients with myeloproliferative neoplasms and cancer in general. Um, and how best to utilize that to optimize patient outcomes is really a, a focus of, of clinical research these days as well.